the love of God is truly amazing. It has been demonstrated repeatedly from the beginning of time as the Creator has reached out to share unconditional love with you and me. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. The ministry of Jesus was characterized by his extraordinary love for others. For three years, he taught, healed, served, and preached the good news. Now, following the miraculous raising of Lazarus from the dead, Jesus and a joyous crowd of followers prepared to enter Jerusalem in anticipation of the Passover celebration. The great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. 
They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Even as the shouts of Hosanna still echoed in the air, seeds of doubt were being sown by his critics as they openly questioned the claims of Christ. Amid the contrasting scenes of jubilation and skepticism, Jesus arranged to meet with his closest followers to observe the Passover feast, challenging them to be servants in a world of need as they remembered him in the days to come. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank uh -huh. 
In these intimate moments and the sharing of the Passover meal, Jesus spoke in sobering tones of what was to come. He spoke of these, his faithful followers, who would soon fall away. He spoke of rejection and death, even amid the claims that his, of his disciples that they would never abandon him. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The solitude of this garden of prayer was suddenly shattered by the chaos of a large crowd led by Judas who had come to arrest Jesus. He, they took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, who was surrounded by teachers of the law and elders. Numerous false accusations were made during a mock trial, ultimately leading to the decision to hand Jesus over to Pilate, the Roman governor for the region. Pilate wanted no part of this lynching, saying that he found no basis for the charges. 
He repeatedly asked Jesus about his claims and the charges being brought against him. Ultimately, though, Pilate relented and handed Jesus over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him with two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle.
nailed to a cross to die a criminal's death, Jesus, the living expression of God's incomparable love, took upon himself the hate and sin of the world, rejected, mocked, beaten, and now crucified on a tree of guilt, this sinless servant endured a final round of insults from those he had come to save. It was now the sixth hour, and darkness caved over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. A man named Joseph from the town of Arimathea, a member of the Jewish, Jewish council, who had not supported the decision to crucify Jesus, went to Pilate seeking permission to take Jesus' body to prepare and bury it in a tomb he owned. Pilate granted his request. Pilate also granted a request from the chief priests and the Pharisees <coughs> that the tomb be made secure until the third day so that the disciples could not come and steal the body, claiming that Jesus had been raised from the dead. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothes were white as snow, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. 
The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. The gracious love of God was demonstrated in the sending of the Messiah, the very Son of God, to live among us. Jesus lived a humble life of love, ultimately sacrificing his life so that we might experience the gift of eternal life. That kind of sacrifice, that kind of amazing love, deserves nothing less than my very best response. God's gracious gift demands my life my all. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardships, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things 
we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord.